What is up guys and welcome back to Daily Drives. Now a couple of days ago one of our viewers got in touch with us and said hey I have a particular car I would like to have featured on the channel. Now we are very open to this prospect and we welcomed him with open arms and with that we present to you this. So Japanese sports cars will always be a slight favorite of mine. The reason being is that I really do like the balance between the raw driving experience and the technical gadgets and gizmos that these cars possess. Plus, they come with timeless designs. I mean, if you even go back to the very earliest versions of Nissan, their designs till this day are quite special. Now, they're also actually not that painful to your wallet. When it comes to reliability, the Japanese way is pretty much the only real way forward if you want some real bang for your buck. The other thing as well, which is for people like us, is that it gives you a monumental tuning platform when it comes to modifying your car. I mean, you can modify these cars from A to Z, having them go sideways or in a straight line very quickly. So the Nissan Z cars have been developed by Nissan Motors for six generations now. I mean, they started in 1969 with the very famous Fair Lady Z. This car, to Nissan's surprise, wasn't really meant to hit the market as hard as it did. I mean, they really were just developing a small sports car with design aspects taken from other cars, such as the Jaguar E-Type with its long swooping hood. But to Nissan's surprise, <laughs> this car ended up being incredibly popular and was loved pretty much all over the world. And the countries that suffered the most were the countries where that car wasn't being able to be shipped to. So as a result, Nissan progressed its production throughout the years and ended up pumping out the 280ZX and the 300ZX. In 1999, Nissan decided to get back into the business of selling cars hard. Now, Renault at the time had a 44.4% ownership of the company and stated that they will make the Z a profitable prospect. And that's exactly what they did. The 350Z was incredibly attainable. They came out with seven various models and the king daddy of those models was the Nismo. Now, the Nismo was a small manufacturing segment within Nissan who did their motorsports development. They were actually building all their race cars for them. Now, they added suspension components, they made the car handle a little bit better, and they made it the rawest of raw that it could be. So this is the latest version of the Z Nismo lineup. However, it's not actually that new. This car is actually a 2010 model. It houses the 3.7 liter V6, otherwise known as the VQ, producing around 350 horsepower. And it also has the continuous variable valve timing control system. Which is by far the singlest, most difficult name I've ever had to say on this entire car show. However, it also comes and is mounted to a six-speed synchro rev system, which is where you press the clutch, it actually holds the revs in one place, which Osama will demonstrate at a later stage in this video. So the 370Z Nismo compared to its other 370 variant had to be slightly adjusted. So it came with four and two piston calipers, stabilizer bars, some stiffer springs and 19 inch rims, which gave this car a stronger handling characteristic. They added the body kit to it. Now this particular car doesn't look like it would look factory because the owner has sprinkled his own small touch to it. But nevertheless, it is as close to the real example as we can physically get today. So this is where I relate back to one of the first points that I'm Made in this video where this car hasn't aged a day. I mean, this is a 10 year old 370Z. You wouldn't think it, you wouldn't see it. If you saw it on the road, you could mistake it for a 2017 or 2018 model. Compared to some of its rivals, it's aged much better. I mean, it's killed off some of its competition. A lot of the cars that this car was actually introduced with are now no longer available. There were only a couple of car companies that revived the older names. Now, I can't sit here and explain how this car feels to drive and for that I can rely on my my trusty co-host to tell you exactly what it is like to drive this car.
So as soon as you get into the 370Z, you'll notice that it is very tight in here. It's very small. And that's really weird because this car weighs 1,500 kilograms, man. Like you'd expect the car to have a little bit more space. This is a manual, so you do have another pedal on your left. And when you want to change gear and hit that manual, I keep hitting my knee on the bottom of the steering wheel, trying to shift over. So if you're a big person, this might not be the best car to get. It does feel a little bit dated, but it's pretty much the same as the new ones. And uh, you start to feel that it is time for Nissan to move on. Daily practicality, not that great, not that much space. In here, in the boot, pretty much anywhere. So uh, not a touring car, I guess that's expected. Inside you got these gauges, which look really cool from the outside, but once you see what they read, it's kind of uninteresting. One is the time, the other one is your battery voltage, and the one on the left is your temperature. I do think these three gauges here are a missed opportunity. They could be something cooler that actually move about while you're driving, but maybe they were worried that they might break. I don't know if you can hear this, but the road noise, it's incredibly loud. That just goes back to the same thing. What weighs so much in this car? Because they clearly haven't done a lot of soundproofing. Love the fact that it's naturally aspirated and revs really high. It just takes a long to go through that rev range and uh, yeah, the noise isn't that very good. This particular car has an um, exhaust modification makes it sound a little bit more sportier, but I don't know. It's not hitting my heart with the sound. The car has a special trick gearbox. So basically when you push the clutch pedal, change gear, the next gear is rev matched perfectly. So there's no jumping and jolting around. Now you also get the same thing when you downshift. So I'm in fifth now, clutch in, push into fourth. The revs are already waiting for me there. Same thing. Going down again, does it for me. Just take off perfectly out of any corner. It's a great bridge for people who don't know how to drive manuals and have issues with changing gears. It kind of helps them out with that. I support this kind of technology. Get more manuals now. We need more manuals. Save the manuals. So one interesting thing about this rev match situation. So you're approaching, let's say, a uh, traffic light. Goes red go to neutral and us manual boys like to move the gear shift around a bit. I don't know why we just like doing it. And when you do that, it will try to figure out what gear you want to go into. I'll try and demonstrate it because it's hard to talk and do that at the same time. So third, play around with it. So you can literally <laughs> rev with your gear shifter. I find that hilarious. But thankfully there's a button to turn on that off uh, so you don't, you can drive it like a purist. Woo, that's a little whoop. Wheel spin on the gear change. Zero to 100 kilometers in five and a couple of seconds. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. It doesn't feel like a fast car. And uh, in this price range, you can find faster vehicles. So why would you want one? Well, the Nismo, it's all about track performance and taking them corners as fast as possible. And you have a short track around you, which doesn't require tremendous amounts of power. This could be a very good toy to have. Getting up to seven and a half thousand revs and shifting gear and peak power comes at 7.4. So you really have to go all the way to the end to get the most out of this. Nine out of 10 times, if you got a very fast car, you're never actually using this, its potential unless you're going on track. With this kind of car, you can slam through the gears and still remain under the speed limit. Sometimes. <laughs> I think I'd be able to recommend this car to a young driver and enthusiast because for everyday driving, it's kind of stiff. So if you're not used to stiff cars, well, you better if you want to get one of these. And if I was looking to buy a Z, honestly, I'd either get a used one or just wait for the new one. So that was our take on the 370Z Nismo. We hope you enjoyed this video. Comment down below with any other comments you want to give us about this car, maybe some of the other cars that we've been working with in the past. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. It really does help the channel. And until then, see you next time.